Thank you. It's like an LA traffic jam out there. I'm streaming. All right, go ahead, Joshua. We're live. Good morning, as you're tuned in this morning on Facebook. Glad to have you here. We're getting ready to start our first ever drive-in service here at New Beginnings Church. So whether you're online or in ha or in the parking lot here, we're glad you're here. We're just ironing out a few of the little kinks still. Uh, so bear with us. We'll be going live with worship in about 90 seconds. It's spinning all the way. everybody we're gonna get started this morning glad you're all here whether you're again in the parking lot or watching online this is something new for us and but you know what it's gonna be something that maybe becomes a part of who we are we're getting the the gospel out we're gathering as a church we're excited about that um, if you are watching online drop us a comment let us know you're there we appreciate you tuning in also pray for our worship leaders hands it's a little chilly out here uh, two days ago it was 75 degrees, today it's 36, 
Uh, but doesn't matter. We're going to praise God this morning. Amen. Just one quick announcement. want to let you know that from this point on, for the duration of our time, uh, the church facilities are closed. And we just want to encourage you to worship God. We're not going to be here long this morning. But we, just, we felt it was important to get out of the church, to get out to the sunshine, to gather together and see some smiling, familiar faces, to worship God together, and to let each other know that, hey, we're okay. So with that said, we're going to open in prayer. And we have two things we want to pray specifically for this morning. Number one, we want to pray that, that a spirit of fear is lifted from people. We want to pray that people begin, especially the church and people of God, begin to walk in faith, not in fear. We also want to pray, obviously, against this disease, this coronavirus that is affecting not just our community, not just our nation, but the world. So I would ask right now if you would bow your heads and join with me in prayer right now. And we're going to pray in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for beautiful weather today, for a sunshiny day. We thank you, God, for giving us the technology to be able to do something like this. And God, for the, for the creativity, God, that you have put within us, God, to think outside the box. Lord, the, the, there's a disease that is, is ravaging our, our, our world, Lord God, and it's, it's, it, 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 takes, it, has no, it plays no favorites. But we serve a God who loves us so much that he's given us the ability to, to, to think outside the box again and do something like this where we can still worship together, proclaim the gospel, and, and, and put Jesus back on the throne. God, I pray that the spirit of fear would be removed, God. I pray that, that we would have a spirit of peace, Lord God, for you are the Prince of Peace. I pray, God, against this virus. I curse it. I rebuke it. I pray safety and health, Lord God, not just for the people of this church, but for our community, God. I pray, Lord, a special touch over health care workers and others that are on the front lines during this time, Father, serving and giving tirelessly of their time and their talents and their skills and their energy, Father. I pray protection over them. God, I pray for our country. I pray for the leadership, God, from the highest level, the president, the office of the president, all the way down to the local levels of government, Lord God. I pray for wisdom for our leaders, Father. And God, I pray that our time together now would be an encouragement, would be uplifting, and that we would walk out of here saying, it has been good to be in the parking lot of the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you say amen, honk your horns for that one. Amen. We're going to turn things over to Pastor Christy, who's going to lead us in a few choruses this morning.
rape of coronavirus, we shout the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, the powerful name. Oh, there's authority in that name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Sing that name. Jesus. Jesus. Sing it again. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. 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 Oh, we love you. but most of you already are. <laughs> but anyway, I want to read you a scripture verse this morning from Philippians chapter 4, starting with verse 5 through verse 8. It says, let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Church, the eyes of the world are watching. They want to see what our response is. And it is not a time for the church to shrink back. It is not time for the church to disappear. It is not time for the church to go into hiding. It is a time for the church in every way possible to continue to be the hands of God extended in the world that we have been placed in. Amen. And that world for New Beginnings Church is Jameson. That world for you is your family. That world for you is your workplace. There are people who are fearful. Maybe you're not seeing them face to face on a regular basis right now, but maybe you're having conference calls. Maybe you're having online meetings. And through those opportunities, continue to share the faith that you have in Jesus that brings hope Amen. and brings peace. Amen. It goes on to say, remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Say, don't worry, don't worry. about anything. Amen. It goes on to say, instead, pray about everything. Pray. Yes. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace because you're not focusing on the problems. Amen. You're focusing on the one who has an answer. Amen. It says, then, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And I want to tell you this right now. This, is, this isn't a deeply spiritual thought I'm going to share with you right now, but it's an important one. You need to be careful what you're getting into your mind. Wow. 
You need to be careful what you're getting into your spirit. Everyone's worried about washing their hands, and that's important. Everyone's worried about social distancing, and you know what? Practice good habits to keep yourself safe and healthy. Amen. But then we sit in our living rooms, and we watch the news for three, four, five, six, ten hours a day. We need to be just as careful what we allow to get into our spirit as anything else. Amen. So I want to encourage you to use wisdom in those areas. Fill yourself up with the Word of God. A couple of quick announcements, and then we're going to have our missionary come today. I'm excited to have a missionary with us today. Amen. Joe Callie, Youth Alive Missionary, because if there's anybody that exemplifies going into places that are not always easy, doing things that don't always come uh, simply, uh, it is our missionaries. And so I'm excited to have Joe here with us today, but just a few little bits of housekeeping. First of all, if you're watching on Facebook or you're watching or you're in the parking lot and have a Facebook, share this right now. Get on your, on your wall and share this with your friends. Secondly, you've already been honking for amens. Feel free to do that as Joe's preaching. Uh, if you want to say praise the Lord, flash your lights. And if you're especially touched by one of his points, turn on your wipers and put your, your misters on and, and it'll, it'll let Joe know that you're sitting in your car crying right now because he's touched you with a word from God. Also want to let you know that as far as, as giving is concerned, we're going to have an opportunity for you to give. As you leave today, there will be someone, as you're pulling out, you can roll down your window, drop your offering as you drive away, or even better, get used to and start giving online through our website, nbcnow.org backslash giving. If you're watching online, you can also give uh, that way as well. And one of the things we want to ask you to do is consider partnering with us over the next few weeks and giving something special towards a new sign. Elena, if we can pan over to the sign right over there, that'd be great. We need a new sign. And so we're asking but the, the, our church members and people to partner with us. We've got a price. It's $2,700, and we want to be able to get that new sign. And so consider over the next few weeks doing something for that. also want you to know that every night starting tonight at 6 o'clock, we're going to be going on live, live on Facebook and on YouTube, and we're just going to be sharing encouraging words. We may have a time of worship. We're just going to have some different things going on every night starting at 6 o'clock on our Facebook and YouTube channels. And then one last thing as Joe comes and be prepared, comes to share the word with us. At the end of the service, as we're leaving, if you would like prayer, we still want to pray for people. The Bible says, call on the elders and be anointed with oil and be prayed for. And so if you need prayer, what we're going to ask is as you pull out, you can pull to the left into this side parking lot and pull into a spot and we'll come to you and we'll pray with you before you leave if you would like that. If not, when we dismiss again, feel free to just head out uh, carefully and be on your way and enjoy the rest of your day. So with that said, if our missionary would come, let's give it up for Joe Cowley. Let's hear some horn honks. Yeah! For our missionary Joe Cowley. Praise God. Hey, we serve a living God, amen? amen? Hey, let's make some noise for your awesome Pastor Ben and his wife and family. So why don't you honk your horns like crazy for Pastor Ben? If you're on Facebook, put a bunch of praise emojis, shouting down celebrations, because New Beginnings has an awesome leadership here. And I so thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to come and share this morning. Um, God is so good all the time. Amen. And that will always be the same, friends. Always be the same until we all breathe our last. And yet still God is also good. Amen. So I... Uh, I need you guys also, let's all see if your high beams work this morning. Why don't you flash your high beams for me? There we go, there we go. All right, all right, now check it out. Now let's all do your honk your horns, let's go. All right, all right, so check it out. We are going to make some noise here in this parking lot, amen, for the name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, so we're excited. So yes, as we continue to preach, we want to hear the shoutings of people. We want to uh, hear the noise of your horns because I believe what God has birthed upon our hearts this morning is not just going to impact you personally, but I think you're going to go from here in the community. We'll see a unique difference that's coming out of New Beginnings Church, amen? amen. So uh, my name is Joe Kelly. My wife and I, we've been in youth ministry for the past 13 years. We have five awesome kiddos. Uh, in high school, God gave me a passion 
to help students realize the best decision they could ever make is to follow Christ. Amen? Amen. And uh, so, so we've been in ministry for the past 13 years. And just recently, back in July of 2019, my wife and I stepped out of our, our local church where we were at in New Holland. And God called us to be a Youth Alive missionary. Uh, and that's to reach all of Pennsylvania and Delaware students to empower them with the, with the ability to share their faith no matter where they're at. And uh, so that's what we've been doing all across Pennsylvania and Delaware. We travel. We are mo simply mobilizing students to help share their faith in their community, in their school place, where they're pretty much always walking around uh, brushing shoulders with hundreds of other students. We believe John 10.10 10 is still true today, just as much as Jesus said in, in the book of John. And it says this, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. If we can get students all across Pennsylvania and Delaware to understand that Jesus Christ did not just die for salvation for them, but died that they might have the fullness of life on this side of heaven, other students would recognize, hey, there's something different about that teenager. There's something different about that student in my math class. And I'm praying and believing that as we continue to travel, students all across Pendel will see that, hey, we serve a God that is still alive today. And there's more people, amen, that need to know about Jesus. Amen? The second thing is this. We help them to understand, to look up and open their eyes. John chapter 4 says this. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you say there's still four months and then comes the harvest. But behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for the harvest. He who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. I tell students all the time, when you're walking in school, don't just become so accustomed to go to math class, to go to, uh, to PE class, to go to your football practice or whatnot. Understand, open your eyes. Look across the hallways, because there are students that still need Jesus. Amen. If you and I, all across America, all across the world, would simply just pause, walk slower, open your eyes where you're at, and look in your community, there are still people that are dying and going to hell. And that's not okay, friends. Amen. That is not okay. Amen. That is why God's called all of us to reach the lost. Amen? Amen. So we travel and we tell students all the time, Open your eyes and allow God to show and prompt upon you to reach someone in your school system, in your neighborhood, where they're at. We want to make sure students are successful at sharing their faith with others. We help raise up campus missionaries, simply starting Bible clubs, simply saying, hey, I want to reach my school campus for the love of Jesus. I want to see people's lives get changed and saved forever. I challenge them to be a full-time Christian and a part-time everything else. Amen. Everybody say, full-time Christian, full part-time everything else. I, I want all of our students, hey, I have five kids. I want them all to graduate with straight A's, you know what I'm saying? But let me tell you something. If we have students graduating and going to college, and yet they've never, ever shared their faith before graduating high school, we have failed, not just as churches, but as parents and as individuals. Amen. It, is our pro it, is, it is important for people that seniors go across the platform as they're about to get the diploma from their principal or superintendent, that they look at their student and they say, I wish you weren't graduating. I wish our school had more people like you. Friends, our community, our world is looking for people that are different. They are looking for people to stand out above the rest. And that's God's people, friends. We are God's people, amen? So students all across, we wanna make that happen. We do a seven project with the school assembly, then also followed by a seven at night rally where we anticipate souls to get saved at the gospel message that follows in that night. And then we also do our one-day conference called Fearless. We empower students to do workshops to understand how to share their faith in their school systems. All right, so, but this morning, so that's what we do as Youth Live, as we continue to travel, encourage others to share their faith. This morning, God's put a message on my heart entitled Shine. So if you hear the word shine, everybody say, everybody say shine, or let me see your flash, flash of high beams. Go ahead, shine. Shine. So this morning, that's what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to ask you to lift your hands where you're at, and I'm going to say a prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the name of Jesus, Lord God, imparts something unique into each person watching, whether on Facebook, whether here in, the, in their car, Father God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that you do what you, what you have established, Lord God, as it comes out of my mouth. 
Let it impact each person in the name of Jesus. Your word says in Psalms 84, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor, and no good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. So, Father God, as we walk blamelessly, don't hold back anything good for your children in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. 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 So as I travel and encourage students, I also look at the churches today. I look at you and I say, hey, it's time to shine. It is time to shine and it's time to lift up the name of Jesus. This right here, friends, is the word of God. It is the Bible. It is not just man created. This was God inspired and breathed into man to write. Yeah. And this is so powerful, friends. So I encourage all people, all believers, Get out in your community. Share your faith. We need our students to do it. But let me tell you something. Adults need to be doing this as well. Reaching the community where you're at. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, 16 through 17. For I am not ashamed. Everybody say ashamed. Shame. Of the gospel because it's the power. Everybody say power. Power. Of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First the Jew, then to the Gentile. See, it's the power for anyone who believes. You know, not just for you and me, but there are still people that still yet to receive the saving power of Jesus Christ. And friends, God has called you to reach your community where you're at. Amen. God has called you to reach your workplace. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a student, there's a story, uh, Macy, she's a seventh grader in York. And I talked with her and she said that God helped her to start a Bible club two years ago. After one of our fearless conferences, she, she wanted to go home and say, hey, I want to start a Bible club in my school. So she got her paperwork. She, went, she called Youth Alive, and we got her the stuff that she needs. She goes to the school principal, and the school principal says, no, you can't do that in my school. She goes back at home. She calls up Youth Alive, and we help her and give her the proper paperwork to show to the principal that she's her right is to have a Bible club, a faith-based club. So she, she did not allow what the man told that she couldn't do but because she knew what God birthed in her heart to do and that's to start a Bible because she understood she needed to shine in her school for Christ so she went back with the proper stuff and the superintendent had to say yes to her and everybody said amen so she started the Bible club check this out this is what happens when Christians shine bright for God she goes and starts this Bible club students start coming to the Bible club because she stepped out in faith her students and the youth group that she was a part of, they started saying, Macy, I want to do what you're doing. I want to make an impact in my school. So some of them got in involved in the Bible clubs in their school because they weren't involved with them yet. And then they also said, hey, one student was given the social Instagram feed for their public school. She started promoting the Bible clubs on Instagram Amen. through the, through the school's uh, social feed. Then all of a sudden, because of that, she said, hey, let's have a pre-tailgate party at a football game. So she started promoting that, and she told her youth group, hey, let's get out to this community, let's get out to this school, and as we give out free drinks before the football game, we're going to have conversations about Jesus Christ. Amen. They did that through the football season. <laughs> then at the end of the football season, they said, hey, why don't we do this thing called the fifth quarter on our church property? The fifth quarter is a big after party. After the football game, they invited them to come out to the church property. They had 100 students show up at the church on the church property for the event. You think that's pretty awesome? The student that led the charge, she got up and she preached a, a sermon about salvation, and a handful of them got saved that night. Friends, let's give God praise for salvation, amen? Friends, that's what happens. When one person starts shining bright for God, it's contagious. Amen. It is contagious for other followers of Christ to say, hey, I want to do that. I want to shine bright. You know, there's that old song that as a, as a kid, oh, before I get there, let's go to Matthew 5, 14, that says this. You are the light of the world. Let me see those flash, those beams. Let me see those high beams. Let's Amen. go. You are the light of the world, a town built on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and gives light to everyone in that house. For in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And glorify who? Glorify our Father in heaven. So check it out. They're that old, that, that old song, you know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, you know. We sing that as kids, and we're like, oh, that's such a cute little song. And then I remember as a kid, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Like, and then we go, oh, hide it under a bushel, 
And then all of a sudden, like, we go, no. And I remember as a kid, like, just goofing off, like, and say, no, you know, like, just have fun with it. And, and, then, uh, and then there's the other, the, others, uh, the other verse where it said, don't let Satan it out, right? So as a song, it makes sense. As a song, it's like, yeah, duh, I'm not going to put a covering on my light if I need light. I'm not going to let the devil blow something out, right? I mean, as followers of Christ, we understand that. Yeah. Like, duh. But let me explain something to you. We are living in one of the greatest opportunities to shine brighter than ever before. Amen. Don't allow the devil or the enemy or the world to shut you up about what you know about Jesus. Don't stop shining. It's time to shine brighter than ever before. You all know that as light enters the room, darkness must go in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's not by my might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Friends, we are living in a time that God's people are going to shine brighter than ever. I am so grateful Pastor Ben had me come out this morning. And I am so grateful it's not frigid cold out here. But let me explain something to you. It is time to think outside the box. It doesn't matter if you're in a church, outside, online community. We're still professing the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says this in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 to 39. Do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You and I have a confidence now, knowing that through the blood of Jesus Christ, that we get to go to heaven. Through the fact of Jesus dying on the cross, raised back to life, we get to enjoy eternity forever. And how dare we keep that to ourselves. But that's the confidence that you and I have, right? That's the confidence that you and I believe. And it continues to say, so it says, don't throw away that confidence because of what you see around you. Because of what you're living through right now. Don't throw away that confidence. Rather, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you'll receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will, will come and not delay. And my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back, Pastor Ben. But we, and we are not destroyed, but those who have faith and are saved. Amen? Amen. This is who live by faith. We are not shrinking back. We are not shutting ourselves up. We are not stopping the promoting of the gospel. It is, it is time to shine brighter than ever before. Amen. There's a man I met throughout this whole course of stuff that's going on through our media and through the, uh, the virus and all that jazz. I went to the grocery store and I met a man named Mark. And I saw he was having difficulty putting stuff in his grocery, in his carts, I mean, I'm sorry, in his car. So I went over to him and I said, hey, can I give you a hand? And his face looks like he's scared to death. He's like, yeah, thank you. And then he's like, he first, he's like, what do you think about all this? Beep. And, and I was like, let me tell you something. And I got to witness to him. And he's like, yeah, I'm a Christian too. He's like, he's like, but I'm still like, I'm concerned about all this stuff. And I start sharing with him what I do now as a living. I'm traveling Pennsylvania, Delaware, telling people to share your faith. And I'm telling him that we need students to look at their school campus and mission field. And I looked at him and I said, man, I said, where do you work? He's like, I work at a steel industry. I said, now's the time to share your faith. He's like, you're a missionary. Just like I am, I'm going, I'm traveling. I, I might not be in the, in the field like doing steel work, but I'm traveling, empowering people to, hey, let's keep sharing your faith. And he's like, he's like, I've never shared my faith with somebody and I've worked in this place for 20 years. And he's like, just the other day, I, I tried to tell him about like what we're going through, about that, the fact that Jesus is coming back soon. And I said, friend, it's time to share what God has done in your life. Amen. It's not it, like we don't have a time to just sit back in our in our in our rooms, in our cars, in our in our. It just, man, you are. And I looked at him. I said, you're more than a steel worker. You're a missionary on that on that property. It's your job. God has called you to reach that that place for Jesus. And let me tell you something, friends. Whatever work field that you're a part of, that's your mission field. Your mission field isn't just sending money to missionaries to go to Africa, to go to Haiti, to go in all across the world, all right? You yourselves are missionaries where God has planted you. You know why? And this isn't just because, oh, I'm a missionary, I want you to do the work that I, I'm supposed to do. No. Let me tell you something. We, as followers of Christ, are all commanded 
to share the gospel wherever you're at. The Bible says in Matthew 28, Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Friends, the disciples didn't have the Bible to go back to and say, hey, what did Jesus say back then? You know, we have the greatest tool right here. It is so much easier for us to share our faith today than ever before. So this is a command by God. It wasn't a suggestion. Jesus didn't look at Peter and say, hey, Peter, you know, when you think about it, maybe you might want to prepare a sermon. Maybe I want you to preach one day, you know? Maybe you should tell someone about Jesus when you think about it. No, he said it's your job to go. Everybody say go. Oh. And share your faith. It's time to testify, friends. So it is important for you to understand, no matter what your job is, you could be a teacher, you could be a doctor, you could be a lawyer, you could be a salesman, you could be a taxi driver, an Uber driver, whatever you are. Let me tell you something. Your mission field is right where you're at. This community right here, this is your mission field. Amen. This community, these neighbors, these, these houses, the school here, this is your mission field. This is where you can make the greatest impact for the gospel in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is our time, friends. We are living in the greatest times. I used to think living in the New Testament would be awesome. I used to think it would be cool to like walk hand in hand with Jesus. I used to think it would be cool to see what Jesus did. Because Jesus did some pretty amazing stuff, amen? amen. Jesus... He laid hands on Peter's mother-in-law and was healed immediately. Jesus spoke to the man with the shriveled hand and all of a sudden it grew back. Jesus called the dead man Lazarus from the tomb, friends. Amen. Jesus raised Jairus' daughter. Jesus spoke a word of faith and raised back the, uh, to health the centurion who had a servant who was dying. Just even the touch of Jesus' clothes, the woman was healed from the issue of blood. Jesus walked on water, friends. Amen. Jesus multiplied loaves and fish feeding thousands upon thousands of people with just a lunch. God, he was the son of God, man incarnate, God in the flesh. Jesus was shining so bright, which is why people were talking about him left and right. He was doing things that no other Roman, no Roman citizen, no Jewish person could have ever done before. He was setting the chart for you and I, the course for you and I of what is to come. Jesus did all that stuff. So I'm like, man, if I was Peter, that'd be awesome. I would have never denied Jesus three times. I would have been great to walk with Jesus. But then I come across a scripture in John chapter 14. And it totally changed my thinking. Totally, totally put me on this new track of man. We serve a God who's alive, not just back then, but today as well. It says this in John chapter 14, 12 through 14, it says this. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Yeah. You may ask, ask me anything in my name, and I'll do it. See, this verse totally blew my mind, because what Jesus did is awesome. What Jesus did was unimaginable. But then he says, you can do greater things than what I've just done. Which means, friends, I don't I, mm, let me tell you, Jesus raised one dead man, Lazarus, from the dead by calling it a tomb. Like, could you imagine, what's greater than that? A whole cemetery raising back from the dead, amen? I mean, good night, friends. What's greater? What is greater than sending forth the word and healing one person, a Roman centurion, a, 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 an official servant, from back to life. What can we do through Facebook? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? Awesome. The people that are hearing the gospel today, the healings that can happen through internet, through the web, are you stinking kidding me? Yeah, we can do greater than what Jesus did. Yeah. Friends, that means I'm so glad I didn't live back in the New Testament. I'm so glad I live today. And friends, I believe I'm looking at young men and young women that are saying, yes, I believe in that same Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, this gospel never gets old. We are, we are living in the greatest moments in history. We are on the beginning of what God is going to send a mighty revival. 
a mighty sweeping of the Holy Spirit. Like it says in the book of Acts, when Jesus, when the Holy Spirit ascended upon God's people as they were earnestly seeking the greatest gift from God, the Holy Spirit came down and did a wonderful thing in that upper room. And because of that, that's why we're here today preaching the gospel. It's the power of the Holy Spirit, Amen. which is why this still goes forth. It is the power. So friends, we are living in the greatest times. Amen. We are living in sometimes. Jesus is coming back soon. Yes. He'll always be coming back soon. The same Jesus, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead Amen. is inside of every believer. Friends, let's not look at this moment in history and say, oh man, I'm so scared to death. I don't know what it's going to look like. Let me tell you something. I am, I am declaring that we, America is different than every other country. Amen. We are living in a country where God has given us this ability to do things that no other country has done. And I'm believing that we are going to see the hand of God in America. I tell students all the time, I think we're going to see a, a sweeping of the Holy Spirit. I think we're going to see healings like never before. We're going to see dead people raised like never before. And it's not because of a drug or a chemical, but it's because the Spirit of God, because men and women are saying, hey, I'm going to touch you and I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to see the Holy Spirit raise you back to life in the name of Jesus. And I tell students, why can't it be with students? Why can't it start with students? And I go a step further. Why can't it start here in Pennsylvania and Delaware? Why can't it start in Jameson in Pennsylvania? Why can't that spirit move here now in the name of Jesus? Let me tell you, it can. It takes God's people saying yes. It takes God's people seeking the face of God, never stopping, never quitting, never worrying, never doubting the truth about what the Bible says is true. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ is alive and will still profess that until we breathe our last. So friends, as we wrap this up, I know, I firmly believe what you're about to see is a stop of this contagious junk that's going on Amen. in America. Amen. And I believe that all the world will look at it and say, man, how did America defeat that like that? Amen. How do they defeat this virus? How do they defeat, how do they bounce back so fast? And it's not because of anything else except for the Spirit of God Amen. that's in God's people. Amen. Not saying that other countries don't have Christians. I, please don't, that's not what I'm saying. All I'm simply saying is it's time to shine. Amen. We have an opportunity to do something that no other country's done so far. Let's shine brighter than ever before. Let's see a move of God like never before. Let's see God's people step up to the plate and continue to profess the name of Jesus. I said, if anything, like one of, one of the greatest things that's going to come out of this is that almost every church in America will have a social media platform. Before that, we might have been too quiet, friends. We might have been too quiet. God is looking for hungry people. God is looking for sons and daughters to say, God, I want more of you. Not because I have to, but just because I love you and I want to. The Israelites all throughout the Old Testament, when their backs are against the wall, then they cried out to God. Can I tell you, can you live in a place where you just cry out to God because you want to? You cry out to God because you want more of him. You cry out to God, you seek the face of God just because you want to, not because you have to, amen? And I believe we're going to see that happen here in the name of Jesus. As your pastor, Ben, comes forward, he'll, he'll lead us out. Thank you, Father. It is not time for us to shrink back. It is time to double down and go forward in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give your awesome pastor a hand and a shout and a hop. Thank you, Joe. You know, whether you're watching online or maybe you're, you can hear us from the homes that are surrounding, we want you to know that New Beginnings Church is here to serve our community. And if there's any way that we can be a blessing to you today, tomorrow, and beyond, we want you to just reach out. We want to bless our community. We want to bless the people around us. How many of you have seen those videos of people hoarding toilet paper? Seen those videos? We've all seen them. And we've been rightfully outraged by that. 
can I be so bold as to say that God is even more outraged when his people hoard the hope that is Jesus? They come to church and they get fed and fed and they hear and they hear and they don't share it with anybody. We are called to share what we have. It's Jesus. It's resources, if that's the case. So I want to encourage you as we dismiss here in just a moment, as you drive out of this place, don't just go home and hold yourself up with CNN or Fox or whatever your, your choice of misery is on TV. Amen. Go home and maybe make a phone call to someone and say, hey, I'm praying for you. Amen. Go home and maybe, maybe send a postcard. Write a letter. Send an email. Let your light shine. As we're here this morning, I'm excited about I'm excited about what this means. This is the beginning of something new for us. Parking lot full of people, online people watching. We've got people tuning in. I was checking. We've got people from New York. We've got people from Puerto Rico. We've got people from Maryland and Delaware, New Jersey, obviously Pennsylvania. There's people from Florida that are watching our service this morning. Someone's logged in from Bolivia. The message is going out, church. It's an exciting time, as Joe said. But don't think, hey, our church is reaching all those places. Yes, we are. But sometimes when you reach all those places, we've got to be careful we don't miss the person right next door to us. So that's your job. That's my job. Today and tomorrow and the next day. As we close our time here this morning, again, a reminder, if you'd like prayer as you pull out, you can just pull into this side lot, pull into a parking slot, and we'll come to you and we'll pray with you. If you've got to go, we're going to be receiving, again, our offering as you, as you pull out today. If you want to give online, you can also do that, again, through our website, nbcnow.org backslash giving. I don't know what next week holds. We'll let you know. Amen. We could be out here again. Just get in your cars. Just get in your cars. Don't come to the bucket. Just get in your cars. The bucket will be as you pull out. Just get in your cars. Relax. Never seen people so anxious to give. Thank you for that. But I don't know what next week's going to hold weather-wise. I don't know what next week's going to hold. In other, so please stay posted on Facebook, on, on YouTube. on we're, 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 we're texting. We're emailing. We're trying to communicate as best we can with people using the app that we have, Remind app as well. So we'll let you know what's going, but I'll tell you one thing that's not going to change. Jesus, because he never changes. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Praise God. So as we close this morning, maybe you're watching online or maybe you're in the parking lot here, and, and that message that Joe shared just re resonated with you. And you say, Pastor Ben, or and you say, Pastor Joe, I, I really need to step up my game. I need to shine like never before. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, I just want you to lift your hands as a sign of saying, like you tell the teacher, hey, I, here I am, teacher, here I am. Just raise your hand right now as we pray. And as you raise your hand, it's, a, it's just it's a sign between you and God, saying, God, today I choose, I make a decision to allow my light to shine like never before. I'm not going to hide it under a bushel. I'm not going to let it be blown out. I'm not going to hoard what I have to myself, but I am going to proclaim every chance I have in every way that I have the fact that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is healer. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, God with us, and I'm never alone. We're going to proclaim Jesus to the world around us. And maybe you're within the sound of my voice or maybe you're watching online and you say, I'd love to have a relationship with Jesus so that I can let it shine. I want you to know that the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so again, whether you're in this parking lot watching online or, or within the sound of my voice around us, I want you to know that God loves you so much right now 
that he sent his son as a sacrifice to pay for your sins and for my sins, for the things we've done wrong, and that he wants to have a relationship with you that can start simply by believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he gave his life as a sacrifice and rose from the dead, believing that in your heart. And then the next thing the Bible says is confessing with your mouth that he is Lord. Amen. By simply saying these words, and you can repeat them after me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus died for me. Dear God, I thank you that my sins are forgiven. I ask that Jesus would come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. It's that simple. But it's also just the beginning of a journey. And so if you prayed that prayer, you can let us know. One somehow, some way, let us know. But today's the day where God wants to start something new through the people of this church Amen. and this community. Pastor Christy, if we could, do you have one more chorus we could close with before we dismiss? Again, as she leads us in that chorus, you could start returning to your cars. Please don't start driving off. Jason is going to direct traffic to leave smoothly. Again, if you want a prayer, come to the side lot. If you have an offering, they'll be receiving that as you leave. We thank you for joining us today. Tune in tonight at 6 o'clock, and we'll be sharing more from God's word and more encouragement for his people. Amen. Pastor Christy, if you would lead us. This feels very simple. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. As we seek his face, he is here in this place. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. There's nothing, there's nothing like the presence of the Lord. As we seek his face. As we seek his face, he is here in this place. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is nothing like the presence. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. As we seek his face, as we seek his face, he is here in this place. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is freedom in the presence of the Lord. There is freedom in the presence of the Lord. There is freedom, there is freedom in the presence of the Lord. The Lord, as we seek His face, as we seek His face, He is here in this place. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is healing in the presence of the Lord. There is healing in the presence of the Lord. There is healing. There is healing in the presence of the Lord. As we seek his face, as we seek his face, he is here in this place. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is nothing, there is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. As we seek his face, as we seek his face, he is here in this place. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your presence that has been here with us today. But not just with us, it's been with, with churches and, and services and, and the people of God all around the world, all at the same time, because that's who you are and what you're capable of. 
And so, God, let us be reminded as we leave this place, we're not leaving the presence of God, for the presence of God dwells in his people. But let us take that presence everywhere we go. God, I pray health and healing. I pray safety and opportunity for the people of God. God, I pray that we would be a support to our community in every way, shape, and form we can. Not just to say, I'll pray for you, but God, in very real and tangible ways, show us and lead us to those places where we can serve, where we can support, where we can help, and we can shine our light. Be with us as we go, Father God, as we as we worship through our giving, as we leave, I pray your blessing as we bring the tithe and the offering and every promise that goes along with those things that are ours. I pray that right now in the name of Jesus and all of God's people said, amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Have a great afternoon again. Jason is going to dismiss you by Rose, so please hang tight. Again, if you like prayer, pull over to the side lot. If not, have a great afternoon. God bless you. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. As we